which is uh, relating to uh, the previous diagram that I showed, and it's uh, essentially what do we do with the actions, or how do we make uh, decisions regarding uh, our actions on the system. Um, the motivation is obvious, so I'm not going to uh, give any more information on this, but uh, along the lines of the previous presentation, we're seeking uh, basically a policy or a plan for optimal inspection and maintenance planning. And coming back to the original influence diagram, uh, I will be discussing, uh, I, I will be looking in this problem by uh, separating it in uh, terms of three components, the system uh, uh, itself, uh, which uh, uh, basically is described by uh, condition or state, uh, the observations or structural health monitoring technologies that we can implement or use, and what is called the actions, which is basically or uh, essentially the decisions on how to maintain or intervene in the course of the management of the system. Uh, and so if we look at it uh, in terms of this simple graph, uh, I am basically discussing a, a problem where uh, the system uh, is at a state which might be known or unknown, um, and on which we seek to uh, uh, perform an action, which you see here noted uh, in this block. Uh, but before that, there is the possibility to uh, actually perform an observation. Uh, and depending on the uh, action and resulting state of the system, uh, then uh, we are actually uh, then we end up with a reward. There, this reward could also be a loss. Uh, I will use the term reward in what I discuss here, but obviously the two are uh, related. Uh, and so, in uh, solving this problem of uh, uh, d uh, decision making or basically uh, uh, deciding upon a strategy. Uh, we could look at it as a, a classical Markov decision, let's say, process where we have a, a, a system or an environment uh, which is at a given state, and we have an agent that seeks to take an action uh, of which, uh, of the results of which he is actually uncertain. And once this action is taken, then uh, he, uh, let's say, receives this uh, reward. Uh, the Markov decision uh, framework is actually quite flexible. I, it, I have to say, it of course, makes the assumption that uh, uh, the state is uh, only uh, conditional on the present uh, action uh, and state, and so it doesn't uh, uh, look back into the uh, history. Uh, it also uh, can actually, it is flexible in the sense that it can handle environments that are stochastic, uh, that are stationary or non-stationary. It can handle uh, let's say periodic or aperiodic inspections, but it makes a very uh, important assumption, the fact that the state uh, is uh, observable. Uh, in the sense that once we have an observation, we are certain about the, the state uh, of the system. In s infrastructure management or structural health monitoring, this is hardly ever the case. Uh, when we make an observation, then it also comes with some uh, uh, level of confidence. And so instead, what I will be discussing here uh, is uh, an approach uh, where uh, the state or our estimation of the condition of the system comes with a certain de degree of confidence, as I said before, and this is described uh, by the so-called uh, belief. Uh, and so we seek to determine the policy that which uh, takes into account this belief in our state of the system as it progresses uh, and which helps us decide on the actions uh, to take uh, for uh, optimizing or maximizing our rewards or minimizing uh, our costs. These are the assumptions that I mentioned before. So now the new thing is that uh, the actions are uncertain and the observations are also uh, do not come with uh, a certainty. And if we would like to, uh, actually let me go here, if we would, we would like to see it now in the system, it would basically translate into the addition of this, as we call it, emission probability, which is basically uh, the probability of the observation given the next, uh, uh, the current state uh, and the action that is taken. Uh, as well uh, as uh, with this B, which uh, signifies the belief, the fact that we do not know the state with certainty. Um, just in terms of history, this partially observable Markov decision process approach uh, is basically used in an extensive number of domain, in uh, other diverse domains, uh, such as uh, the industry, uh, robotics, uh, troubleshooting, marketing, and so forth. Uh, I have to say what uh, I consider as a good uh, example or parallel with the um, management uh, infrastructure management problem 
is actually the example in robotics where quite commonly this approach is used for uh, uh, deciding on the optimal path that a robot needs to take given certain uh, possible actions and under certain uh, observations that might be available. This is not too different from the problem that uh, we, we are handling here. In the end, um, the PomDB framework uh, basically comprises a tuple uh, of uh, the, uh, uh, these uh, six uh, components, the system of states, the set of actions, uh, the transition model which describes the evolution from one state to the other, the set of discrete observations uh, uh, and the model of the observations and of course the reward function. Uh, and basically our confidence in the state or condition of the system, uh, here it's, it's actually very well connected to what was presented before, uh, may be obtained using uh, Bayes' uh, rule. I will not stick to the details to the solution of the problem, but I do want to say that essentially in uh, uh, figuring out the policy or path that ensures the maximum reward, we basically here have to solve a recursive problem where we start from the end. And so the problem is, is uh, solved in terms of horizons, where horizons are basically the number of decision steps that you have left. So a horizon of zero means uh, no decision step. Horizon of one means you have one decision step to take. Or an infinite horizon means you're looking uh, in, uh, let's say, the, in a long-term uh, decision planning. Uh, and so uh, we solve uh, in this recursive manner and we try to maximize the expected future reward, uh, which of course is connected to this belief state that I mentioned before and to the uh, rewards of the uh, previous uh, time steps. The problem can be expressed in two ways, and there's two classes of methods that deal with the solution of this, either in the continuous domain, depending on the formulation of the problem that you have, uh, as you see here, or uh, you can also look at it in the discrete domain. Uh, but basically what uh, it boils down to is the fact that this uh, uh, value function is actually piecewise linear and convex. And so in order to uh, solve the problem in the end, it is enough. Uh, to uh, figure out the set of characteristic uh, vectors, these uh, A vectors or alpha vectors as they are, they are called, are basically the gradients of this value function for uh, different belief states. Uh, and uh, the solution algorithms that try to figure out this optimal policy basically try to figure out what these A vectors uh, are. And there's a number of algorithms that can be used depending on whether your problem is formulated in the discrete or the continuous domain. Uh, recently, we also presented the, an extension of existing algorithms for the continuous problem when you have uh, transition or action mod models that are nonlinear in nature. And so what I will present to you here as an application is based on this uh, methodology, but I would like to just simply go to the example. If we assume that we have a structure or a component and we uh, have a set of actions, uh, let's say, of different intensity that you can take on this component. Here we uh, have three uh, actions. We have the possibility to do nothing, a minor type of uh, intervention such as maybe painting, and then uh, some more uh, intensive type of interventions such as the replacement of a component. And also you could cho choose to replace the system. So there's different intensities to the set of actions. And maybe you have observations that are again of uh, a different uh, uh, of a heterogeneous nature, either you can do nothing or you could visually inspect or you could perform perhaps a non-destructive type of evaluation. Uh, then we can assume that we also have some sort of idea of what is the state or condition of the system, but only an idea, not a certainty about it. Here I am uh, using an example with a one-dimensional model because it is a simple one, but uh, this does not mean, however, that you cannot include more components that, uh, to this uh, state of the system. It can be a vector of different uh, indices. So let us assume that you do have such an index that describes the state of the system, described by this mean and variance here. Uh, a good question is how do you get the index? Well, you could actually get it from, let's say, a strategy such, such as a simple inspection. Even this would give you something like a cate categorization of the state. In Switzerland, it would be in five, across five uh, uh, grades. And of course, you could also give it, uh, excuse me, you could also give it some sort of uh, confidence, there, thereby associating some sort of standard deviation to this uh, categorization, which uh, depends on the, uh, let's say, experience of the uh, inspector. 
Uh, here I wanted to say that uh, in the parallel action TU 1406, there is a big discussion on what are actually indicators or indices that can be used and this would give uh, maybe a source of, uh, uh, let's say, the metrics that one could use uh, for these uh, solutions. But also you could use uh, indicators that come from permanent monitoring solutions and in fact in this action there is a fact sheet already where we describe uh, performance indicators from vibration-based monitoring, where again you get quantities such as this, uh, which is basically a mean and standard deviation that can be connected uh, to the condition of the system. So assuming you do have this quantity, we can also assume you have uh, this diverse type uh, of observations that I mentioned before. You see there is a more crude uh, assumed observation here, which could correspond to visual inspection. In this case it's a simple uh, good or bad uh, situation. Uh, if you're here, your, your system is in a good state here, and if you're here, of course, it is, uh, let's say, a deteriorated state, and there is an associated uh, confidence with this decision. Or you could have a more refined and, and more costly inspection approach, uh, such as non-destructive testing, and of course there you will get, a, let's say, a more refined um, uh, assessment on the condition of your component or perhaps system, uh, again with uh, some sort of uh, uh, confidence. We also need to have the transition or action models as they are called and these are uh, uh, basically a description of what is the effect of a specific action onto the state of your system. Here it is a conceptual example and we wanted to see uh, how uh, nonlinear processes can be modeled but what we assume is that you you have a, a specific transition uh, if you do nothing, uh, just to let the system deteriorate. Uh, if you have a, a minor intervention such as painting, then maybe this would only lack, uh, act in a specific range of the state of your system, might do nothing when you have significant deterioration, and again, might do no significant difference if your state is quite good. And then uh, we have a more severe intervention uh, that could have an effect in a broader range of the states of your system, and you could also choose to replace uh, in which case, of course, you go, you go back to the original uh, state. But, of, but all of these actions also come with their uh, own and dedicated costs. Uh, depending on their severity, one might be more uh, expensive than the other. So the issue in the end is how to devise this uh, policy uh, planning. And I mentioned before that here it is done in terms of horizons. So here what I show you, uh, and the way we chose to depict it, because this is also something that is a question for us, how do you depict these things in a way that they are, uh, let's say, that they are meaningful for the operator or the person who is to take the decision? We chose to provide this in these sort of maps where in the x-axis you have the mean of the state of your system. On the y-axis it's the standard deviation. Those were the two variables in this case describing the state. And in the different uh, symbols here, x, cross, and the circle, you have the different kinds of observations that you can perform. And the different color are the different types of actions that you could perform. And this is conditioned on how many decision steps do you have left. This plot is for only one horizon, one decision step left. And of course, it is taken into account uh, all of the possible uh, combinations of observations that you need to take. So in terms of solution, it's not that much different uh, from the complexity discussed before. Here's uh, the example for more horizons. So this is with two decision steps left, three decision steps left, uh, and so forth. And you could also have an infinite horizon. Uh, now the process for the decision making in this simple example would be the following. You have the system, you have the condition indicator. This gives you a mean and variance. You go, uh, let, let us assume you have uh, a number of two decision steps left, then you know you, you're also, we also have this plot, uh, which is, let's say, the policy plot. And depending on uh, where the index brings us, then we can uh, figure out or we are pointed to a specific uh, action that we can undertake and a specific observation that we can perform next. The observation will then tell us that after that action, the state of the system is, uh, in this case, I guess, improved. Uh, and, it, uh, and you're pointed to a new, uh, let's say, uh, point in your uh, uh, policy plan. 
now you're, uh, if we assume that before we had two decision steps to make, so two horizons to plan, this would mean that the next, uh, in the next decision that you're asked to make, you're left with a one uh, horizon. So you would go to the corresponding plot, unless of course you want to change again, uh, you're uh, depending on judgment if you want to change uh, the number of uh, decisions or horizons in which you want to plan. But uh, in this case, it would be one uh, horizon left, and then th the process uh, simply continues uh, in the same uh, way. Of course, this is an overly simplified, uh, let's say, uh, example, uh, but the methodology is actually uh, can be extended to account for higher dimensions of the states, um, and also possibly uh, uh, diverse. Uh, Know, diverse types of observations and diverse uh, number of components to be inspected and so forth. The idea is that uh, if you were to, uh, let's say, have uh, this, uh, uh, to look at uh, uh, the course of time where you're asked to inspect uh, a specific component, where maybe we can assume that this is the type of uh, deterioration that the component uh, undergoes, uh, if you were to have a stochastic model of the transition of this deterioration, then without any observation, you would be, uh, let's say, uh, forced to take a decision based on this sort of rough gray uh, graph. Once an observation is obtained, depending also on the accuracy of the method, every time you can redefine your, your confidence in the state of the system, and accordingly, if you judge this is necessary, act uh, at the point in time uh, where it is needed. Um, the method comes with a number of considerations, and actually there's uh, research undergoing right now in order to extend this uh, uh, and look at what happens when the complexity increases, when we want to retain more steps back in time, so not just a simple mark of assumption, and also how to deal with proper monitoring results that are continually, uh, let's say, uh, available and uh, mean uh, that you can update these maps uh, on the basis of the inflow of new data. Uh, there is some literature on this topic by uh, the group of Matteo Pozzi and Kostas Papagosta uh, Papagostadinu, so, and also some work of ours that you can uh, refer to for further details. And uh, I would be happy to receive your questions. Thank you very much.